everybody, Jeff Bernard with Solve Systems, and today we're going to go over how to map out a API request and page through it in Microsoft Logic Apps. This is something that uh, can be a bit difficult if you're not understanding of how to page through a request, and it's very important to know how to do this because if you start getting API calls that are very large or you want to pull you know, one record at a time and then page through it, you're gonna to need to know how to do that. So that's what we're gonna go over. Let's get into it. So we're landed in an API that's gonna have a paging mechanism built onto it. It is uh, a airline passenger uh, API. It's a, it's a fake one um, and it's gonna be helpful for us to understand what's going on here. So we're gonna look at the URL structure. So you have your URL structure up here. You have your main URL, and then you have the page, and it starts at zero, and then it's going to increment one, two, three, and this is gonna be the size. So this is gonna be the amount of passengers uh, that it's gonna return per page. So if I dialed this back to one, then you can see it's only gonna return one passenger. So depending on what you want to accomplish here, we'll just set it to a thousand and then that will return all of, you know, a thousand passengers or so. So we're gonna go into Microsoft Logic Apps and then we'll see something that we've built here. I just added a recurrence trigger because that just allows me to build the flow, but in a, in a circumstance where you would want to be pulling data from somewhere, pushing it somewhere else, you'd have like maybe an HTTP request here, um, or you would have a webhook firing from another system into here, uh, calling, you know, getting these passengers or whatever other API data that you would want to get. But for the sake of this video, we're going to just have this recurrence trigger to start it off. So I just set the interval to 12 and then months just because I don't want this firing. This is for uh, illustration purposes. And then we're going to add in a variable. And what it, the type of variable is going to be an integer and we're going to set it to zero. And so this is going to be an incremental variable. And what that means is that whenever we see the URL structure here and we have the page size zero, we want to increment that. Every time it gets, it's going to increase the page number, you know, one, two, three, etc. So we'll go back into Logic Apps and then we'll add an until loop. And what this is going to do is it's going to start the Logic App and then it's going to call the URL. And what we're going to do is we're going to add in this variable here. So we initialize the variable here and then we have, we're going to insert it right after the equal sign with the page number right here. So that gets us our URL structure with that incrementing variable. And then we're going to parse the JSON and then we're going to add an increment variable. We're going to set the increment variable here. So what that looks like is we'll simply Add it and then we'll go increment variable increment page so that's remember we we uh, initialized it up here and then we'll want to add one so every time this runs it's gonna stay in this until loop it's gonna start it and then it's gonna stay in this until loop it's gonna get the first page with this initial variable of zero here it's going to parse the JSON and then it's going to increment that variable by one each time. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, et cetera. And so it's going to continue paging through in a loop until the loop is done. And the way we exit that loop is we have total pages. So this is from the parse JSON. You'll see we are allowed to get a variable from there. So when we have that parse JSON, it makes all these elements 
of the JSON available. And we'll have total pages, which you can see if I highlight over it. And then we have is equal to increment page, right? So it's saying total pages, which if we have here, we have eight total pages. We have a thousand passengers per page and 7,724 7, total passengers. So that brings us to eight pages. And then we will add that in here and then it's gonna compare the two. So it's gonna say total page is equal to and then the variable and then it'll exit the loop. So that is how you page through until you get to the end of a REST API paging uh, you know, schema. And that might look different with a different API st structure like an OData API. We'll have a skip token and we'll do that one at a different point. But this is for paging through a REST request. So we'll run it. And it'll take a few seconds to finish. We'll go here. And then we see it succeeded in seven seconds, right? So what it did is it got eight pages. And then it increments it each time. And you'll see the increment here. So it's value one. It pushed through here zero page, the first page, with a thousand passengers per page, and then value one, and then on the next request, it goes page one. And then the output of that increment variable is two, and so it's gonna go page two, and then value three. So it's gonna keep iterating and paging through those requests. So I hope that's helpful. I know uh, until loops and paging was something that I had to learn and figure out. So let me know if you want me to make some different videos and I'm always available to help. Just comment and or put in a request at solvedsystems.com forward slash contact. Look forward to talking to you soon. Have a good one.